You are very welcome to this yin yoga routine for the back and the shoulders. We'll do some poses together that will help to release tension from those areas and also gain some flexibility as well. You will need a yoga block or maybe a bolster if you have one. We're going to end this practice with supported fish pose. Really nice way to open up the chest and get a nice deep stretch into your upper back. If you don't have a yoga block, you can always use a thick book or you can just get a nice firm cushion or a pillow. If you're ready to begin, we'll start in child's pose. So this time you might keep your knees a little bit closer together just to help to target the spine more and get that stretch into your back. You can always sit on a cushion or a yoga block if you need to. Then bring your forehead either down onto the mat or it can rest onto your hands or onto a yoga block. Since we're also targeting the shoulders, you might just walk your hands towards the front of your mat and just help to get everything nice and loose within the shoulder joints. We'll stay here in child's pose for two minutes. From child's pose will come into Anahatasana or puppy pose. So you can start to slowly pull yourself back up. Step your knees in underneath your hips and reach your hands towards the front of your mat. From here, drop your chest and head down, keeping those hips over the knees. So you start to feel that stretch within your upper back around your chest and your heart space. We'll stay here for two minutes in total. If at any point you start to feel as though the pose is too intense or if you're feeling any numbness or tingling within your hands, you can take a bend into your elbows. For now, try your best to focus on all those sensations you feel within your shoulders and your back, while also keeping some awareness with your breath.
will release puppy pose now eventually coming back down to lie on the front of your body however you get there is fine and if you need to come back up before you go down that's okay once you're there just rest in whatever way feels best for you that might be crocodile pose bringing your big toes together and just resting on your hands or if your arms need a little bit of a break, you can bring your hands to rest alongside your body. And we'll just stay here for about one minute, letting the body process everything you've done so far. We'll bring ourselves into Sphinx Pose now. So you can widen your feet, bring your forearms onto the mat in front of you. Measure the distance between your elbows by clasping opposite elbows with your hands. And then try to keep them that far apart from each other as you bring the forearms back to the mat. To make Sphinx Pose less intense at any point, you can slide your elbows further away from you. We'll stay here for two minutes. This time moving our focus down to the lower back, feeling that gentle compression within your lower spine. But at the same time, you're also keeping your chest open helping to open up your shoulder blades, gently bringing them back as if they're coming back behind your ears. You can look straight ahead or you can gaze down at the mat in front of you. When you're ready to release Sphinx Pose, you can slowly roll yourself back down into Crocodile or just coming into whatever way feels best for you to rest.
Now from here we're going to open up our left shoulder by reaching the left hand over towards the right side of your yoga mat. And then your right arm can stay reaching towards the top of the mat. Lower your head back down and if you want to you can rest your forehead onto a yoga block or maybe just tuck your chin to this left arm. And you can stay here or if you want to bring the stretch down along your spine and into your hips, you can also bring your right knee out to the right beside you. So we're in a little bit of a Spider-Man and broken wing hybrid. And as always, you can just take your time to figure out what works for you here. We'll be holding for two minutes in total. Mostly feeling that stretch within your left shoulder, also within your right hip and thigh. And maybe you can feel that very gentle twist of your spine. you can unravel yourself from this pose and once again just coming back to lie on the front of your body feeling whatever you feel internally and externally Now we'll practice two minutes of Sphinx Pose again. If you feel as though you'd like to go a little bit deeper this time, you can come into Seal Pose. And if you do want to come into Seal Pose, you can widen out the feet again. This time, bring your hands to about mat with distance apart, having your arms straight. Now be conscious not to lock your elbows here, just keep them nice and buoyant. And again here, if this feels too intense, you can just slide your arms a little bit further away from you. You might have all of your fingers pointing away from you. And this time you can either look straight out ahead, or if you're in seal, you can gaze diagonally up. When, wherever you are, just tuning into that really nice stretch of your spine. Practice opening your chest, relaxing your shoulders and dropping them down and away from your ears.
wherever you are start to roll yourself back down to the mat and come to rest however you feel called to rest Now you can slide your right arm all the way over to the left. Extending your left arm to the front of the mat and then maybe bringing that left knee out to the left beside you. And we'll stay here for two minutes. And now you can unravel yourself. And for the last time, coming back to lie on the front of your body, resting in whatever position serves you the most. You can either flip over or roll over onto the back of your body now. And keep your yoga block or whatever prop you're using just at arm's length away. When you're on the floor, 
allow your body to take up as much space as it needs. Feel your spine aligning itself against the hard ground beneath you. And now we'll set ourselves up for supported fish pose. So you can take your yoga block or your bolster or whatever you're using and just put it on the mat behind you. The idea here is just to prop up the shoulders and help to open up the chest. So you can come back down onto it, finding that optimal position which feels really good for you. Now the crown of your head can either come back to the mat or you can rest your head onto another yoga block or a cushion. We'll be staying here for three minutes in total. So make sure that you feel totally supported here. This pose is a really great way to release tension from your upper back. It also helps to release the shoulders. You can expand your lungs even more in this position, taking more oxygen into your body. You can experiment with the position of your arms. They might just rest alongside your body or you might take them out wide to come into a kind of starfish shape.
When you're ready to come out of the pose, you can very carefully lift your head. Tucking your chin towards your chest. Propping yourself onto your elbows so you can remove your props. And then slowly roll back down onto the mat. And feel everything just gently falling into place again. Now you can bring yourself back up into a seat on your mat. And once you've found a comfortable way to sit, we'll just release the neck here by dropping the right ear towards the right shoulder. Feeling that opening all through the left side of your neck. If you enjoyed this routine, I'd be really grateful if you could leave this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you're not already subscribed. And we'll switch to the other side now, dropping the left ear towards the left shoulder. And then head can come back to center. Thank you so much for joining me for this routine. I'll see you again on the mat soon, but until then, take good care of yourself and goodbye.